Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you a slip jig called Kid on the Mountain. Slip jigs are fascinating things and uh, the first time you approach them <laughs> they're really quite difficult. Um, the feel of it is it's like a jig but instead of counting one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, da, 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 three, four, five, six, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and da, 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 and it's getting that da, 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 which is the difficult bit. And uh, I do remember a couple of times, first time I played it with a drummer, who didn't know what slip jig was, <laughs> that was a disaster. And the first time I played it with a certain guitarist uh, who also um, didn't really have the handle on it. Um, so it's important, I think, to count it in one, two, three, and then that gives you at least the chance of getting it right. Uh, this is an interesting tune because um, it slips between E minor and G major, which is quite interesting. It has a structure of a kind of a question and answer. So each section is one bar and then an answer and then the same bar and then a different answer. And that happens five times with uh, five different sections. The bowing to this is quite tricky. I have to say I've played this uh, hundreds of times and never given the moment's thought about the bowing and never had any trouble at all. But as soon as I tried to write it down, <laughs> I got into all sorts of trouble. And that's partly because when you try and write something down, you try and make every bar start with a down bow. And um, I very often won't start with a down bow. And whatever problem arises, my bow arm will sort it out without uh, even informing me that it has sorted it out. But you can't expect to get that after only a few years of playing. So I'm going to give you a bowing pattern. But to start with, ignore the bowing and just try and follow the melody. Uh, I'll go through it uh, line by line. So we're starting off one, two, three. <laughs> section one two three This is one of those tunes that doesn't have an ending note, so when you finally um, get to the end and are not going to go back to the beginning, then just stick in an E note at the end. Now the bowing. Um, you could do it mostly all separate bows, um, but the problem with that is that in, um, if there are nine notes in a bar, then starting on a down bow, um, like... Um, Starting on a down, you're going to be ending up on a down, which means you're starting on the next one on an up. So if you don't mind starting your bars on an up, then that's one possibility. Uh, it is important 
with your separate bows to keep them really short. So don't try and do. They want to be um, kind of an inch long. That kind of length. Um, so I'll go through the first bar again and I'll show you the bowing that I have decided is might be a good idea. So that's the first slur. Which gives a nice little thrust to that note. So for that bar we're going slurring, <coughs> slurring those three notes which means a crossing string but uh, I don't find that too hard. And ending up with two notes slurred to give you a start with a down again. So just going through that one down again so that gives a real thrust to that note at the beginning of the second bar and uh, slurring two so we're doing the same thing again lifting off banging down and the same as the ending from the first bar so that line is separate, two slurred, two slurred, two slurred again. So we're using the two slurred to get around the fact that there are these bars that have um, an odd number of um, notes in them. slurring um, two-thirds of the bar into one. at a slowish tempo with the backing. Now I will stress that these bowings are only a suggestion. 
and were I to do it without reading the music, it would no doubt turn into something quite different. Um, but th these are bowings that do work, so if you're at a loss as to how to bow it, then try doing this. If there's something that you don't like, then by all means try something else. Uh, finally, I'm going to give you a version that's got ornamentation. Um, so we've got some rolls, we've got some cuts, and we've got some slides, and a few little drones. So the, the long notes at the beginning of some of the bars, those notes, are good for rolls. So a roll is... Those are the notes, uh, but you play most of the roll happens right at the end of the note. So the the crisper and faster you can play that roll, the better. Um, so you don't want to hear you don't want to hear distinct notes. What you want to hear is. kind of a, a disturbance to the note and uh, I've got a video about rolls which will give you some exercises to help you with that so that's uh, for the first line uh, the second line I think it's nice on those two G's to do, to, to do open G's the place where it goes from minor to the major you can just emphasize that with a, an open G next bar starts nicely with a slide and then a roll it's another slide so I'm starting the slide with my second finger uh, just almost a semitone flat I'm just sliding it up slowly Next line we've got a single cut, which is a upper uh, grace note. So we're just flicking the third finger on and off again. Um, the final line we're doing the open G's again. Notice that that G can ring for a couple of bars after you've played it. Uh, to finish off, I will play all through that ornamented version with the backing. If you would like a copy of the sheet music for this, then do subscribe and send me an email. And if you want to see some really good ornamentation on this, then check out Kevin Burke's video on this, which is great. And uh, I'll see you again soon.